At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Attend Finding Relief After Failed Spinal Surgery on Wednesday, April 5th at 7 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. Hey, it's Zoe with Health Talk. Are you suffering from health problems like weight gain, lack of energy, depression, or back and joint pain? Well, now's the time to do something about it today. Listen to this special offer from my friends at the Roselle Center for Healing and visit them online for details. Control your allergies through a natural integrative approach of chiropractic and nutrition from the Roselle Center for Healing. Take advantage of our spring new patient offer for just $125. For details, visit rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell live in studio waiting to take your calls on anything you want to talk about about your health. You know, without drugs, without surgery, here's the opportunity. This is what we do here every Sunday. So let's get it done. 888 you know, you've had problems and you've gone out and you search, you've applied, you've done things that you think might work. You've taken the drugs to kind of numb it out and nothing goes away. You still suffer with the same old maladies. Do you ever think that maybe you're looking down the wrong trail? Did you ever think that maybe there's another way? You know, I was with a couple of patients this week and it seems like things hit in series and sequence. And somebody asked me the question, well, I just have, and it was a pain pattern, it was chronic and, you know, I'm asking all these questions about when was the first time it ever really happened? When was the first time they f- remember feeling great and there was no problems whatsoever? When was the first time, you know, that little things began to compound and they ignored them? And both of these patients, interesting, looked at me like, you know, why am I asking these questions? See, where you are right now at this moment in time has a trail. It has an opportunity of unfolding the why is that. What do I mean by that? I mean that there was a cause for whatever malady that you happen to be suffering from, whether it's joint pain, chronic pain that just doesn't go away, your brain's kind of deteriorating, it's not functioning the way it's supposed to. All of a sudden your doctor says, oh, on that x-ray we have something that is suspicious and we have to keep an eye on it or that you know that you have some degenerative something or other, whether it's an organ system or a spinal or a joint space. So how did that get there? What was the reason? You know, all of a sudden we see people uh, with maladies that lead to their death too soon. And many of us in all of our lives have experienced somebody was here today and gone tomorrow. And we wonder why that takes place. Sometimes it's a genetic situation that nobody knew about. And, you know, they pushed it a little further than that situation could possibly handle, take care of, and now it's gone. And then other times, you know, it's something that we've ignored, we've set aside, we said, well, not me. So what I want to focus you on today as I answer your questions is what really takes place in the human existence, the body ultimately leading to the problems. We're going to talk about the brain a little bit. We're going to talk about your teeth. How about that? We're going to talk about your teeth because your teeth, believe it or not, has a reflex phenomena to every organ system and every muscle in your body. Have you ever noticed that when your bite isn't right or your teeth aren't uh, doing what they should be doing mechanically or, you know, you have an infection, you have an irritation of the gum, whatever, the rest of you doesn't feel good either and sometimes something hurts where you didn't expect something to hurt before? Well, there's a reason for that. And as I said, every tooth in the body has a relationship to acupuncture circuits and organ systems and neurological networks and so forth. We're going to talk about part of the brain called the cerebellum. It's called the little brain, and it uh, is responsible for all types of problems. There's a reason that we treat 
the upper portion of the cervical area, the neck, in cases of balance, in cases of what appears to be degenerative type diseases, what appears to be like Parkinson-like conditions. There's a reason for that, and I'm going to try to make that very clear to you as we go on through the day today. 888-630-9625. Give me a call. It's cold outside. It's actually that damp. It's not really cold. It's only about 49 degrees, but it's that damp, wet, you know, don't want to go outside type of day. So guess what? Listen to me instead. Call me. Let's talk about your problems, and let's figure this whole mess out and see what really comes about relative to your health. There's only three things that cause anything. Remember this, okay? No matter what program you're listening to on health, there's only three things that cause anything. One is trauma, injury to the body. It can be significant, impactful. It can be very minor and cumulative. The second is biochemistry. Things that you put in your body from the outside that shouldn't be in there or things that you need more to sustain yourself that you don't have the opportunity or you neglect or you're unwilling, whatever, to put those into your system. So what do I mean? Things that you eat that you shouldn't be eating, things that you need more of you don't get enough of. Today's world, electrical fields, input. I'm sitting in a studio right now that has tremendous amount of electrical fluxes around me. And, you know, those who sit here all day long absorbing this stuff, have potentially an irritation or problem that could occur over a period of many years. If you walk into my office, you'll see that I have different uh, mechanisms, different pieces of apparatus and so forth that are tucked in the corners that break up low volt electromagnetic fields for my staff because we want to protect them. And so, and there's little gadgets and gizmos that you can do to also protect yourself, but that's a different story. The, the situation is in the third is that your emotional state. See, what you think about, ultimately, you're going to manifest. If you think that you're, you know, your body's going to break down and, you know, what do you expect for your age? And, well, I can promise you that your body will walk in line with those thought processes over a period of time. So guess what happens when you get all three going? When you have injury to your body, you're not eating the way you're supposed to, and you got stinking thinking. Body breaks down even faster. So here's an opportunity to... What are we going to do with all this mess? How are we going to change it? What do we need to do to make a difference in you? So what I know after over four decades of touching and and treating and motivating and moving people in a direction that is different than what they thought about to begin with is simply this. The body is an incredibly amazing piece of machinery that can change at any moment, providing that you do something different than what you're doing right now. You have to change something. You have to change something. If you're still breathing and you can hear me, then you still have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to get better than where you are right now, providing that you're willing to put in the time, the effort, and the investment to make that happen. So that's why at the Results Center for Healing, that every other week we have our in-house continuing education programs. Why? Because we want you to have a plethora of information to be able to shift and change and Get your life together, maybe for the first time ever. And knowing that that's possible, why not? Let's talk about a few things, and we're going to move into some topics. But in the meantime, 888-630-9625. You know, I've harbanged forever that different types of medications can make things much worse. And I was reading an article. I was going back this week and kind of, you know, pushing through some things that I needed to refresh my memory on because I'm going to be doing a presentation in in about a month that I have to be very clean on some of these meds. But it, it kind of stuck, you know, right up there in front of me that there's certain drugs that increase the risk of neurological degeneration. See, we're talking about neurology a little bit today. So this goes back a couple years ago, and there was a very poignant article in the Journal of Neurology, and it was a published study that found very common prescription drugs for arthritis can dramatically, dramatically increase the risk of you stepping out, checking out because of a stroke. So if you're taking a drug for your arthritis, you have to be very careful because it can kill you. And These drugs were evaluated by researchers, and they were basically things like COX-2 inhibitors. Those of you who have taken them, you get it, you know, and they include things like uh, Celica, I can't pronounce this thing. Anyway, it's C-E-L-E-C-O-X-I-B, Celexibib, and then uh, Diflecan, and uh, there's a whole list of, uh, you know why I can't pronounce these things? 
because I hate them. I don't even like using the, their names in the same, but anyway, they're, they're COX-2 inhibitors. Um, Meloxicam is another one. Etocalac is another one. And they come under many different types of generic and primary uh, titles. So this research program covered 100,000 people in this article that was published in the Journal of Neurology. And it was really remarkable. And this was at the University Hospital of uh, Aarhus in Denmark. And they analyzed records, uh, you know, constantly, and they looked at why these people were checking out and when they first stroked. And uh, they did it over a period of about an eight-year period which with 100,000. So a significant, very significant study. And they showed that those who were currently using these COX-2 arthritic inhibitors, right, 19% to 21% of them were more likely to die after a stroke than those who didn't take the drug at all. And they had a, of these people also, they had a 42%, this is 42%, this is not minor, this is huge, 42% increased risk of dying from a stroke compared to non-users. So, my friends, back off a little bit because the majority of drugs that you're taking to kill pain are COX-2 in some way, and they are combined with other things as well. It's just simply an aspirin, an aspirin. You know, that aspirin a day, that 81 milligram baby aspirin that your doctor says you need to take to thin your blood? Well, first of all, if you've stayed up on the studies, you know that that whole uh, paradigm that the FDA had put out there for years and years and years, they had to kind of swallow their words. And in August of 2014, they published an article completely reversing their position. And what they said that people who were taking these things had the worst cardiovascular outcomes. They dramatically increased the risk of hemorrhagic stroke and myocardial infarct, heart attack due to bleed, due to bleeding significantly. See, when you take all these blood thinners, and in, including aspirin, and you see those bruises on your skin, you're bleeding. That's called blood, and you're bleeding inside as well. So when that happens, don't you think that the risk of bumping into something that could cause a hemorrhagic pattern inside of you, now it can't clot, and you've taken it just a little bit over the edge? Well, I just want you to think about that for a while and say, is there another way to control this? And I will suggest to you that there probably is if you want to begin to do the research that's out there. And, you know, we're going to call it the natural world, but it's really the the integrative alternative world of medicine and naturopathic medicine and chiropractic and acupuncture and herbal medicine and so forth. There are many different ways of making this happen. So I want you to understand that so much of what we are told about and do is not as good as it should be. So one other little piece of data, and then we're going to get into some of the meat of the program today, is, you know, soap, you know, that kind of stuff that you put in, you know, to wash up and kill bacteria, but more importantly, the antimicrobial stuff that's in these things, and particularly if you, guess what they do? They dramatically increase your risk of liver disease. So every time you go around and you put this stuff in your hands and you're going to kill all these bacteria or you use other types, you have a problem, my friends. These The ingredients, these antimicrobial ingredients in these soaps can cause liver cancer in laboratory studies. Now, this is University of California, San Diego School of Medicine. They said the chemicals, you know, what they do is they disrupt the integrity of the liver and they compromise liver function. And, you know, they were given, in some of these animals that, the, that they did the initial studies on, they were given, you know, pro-cancer uh, patterns uh, that just they couldn't turn around from. And they formed tumors and they died. So what I'm saying to you is that be very careful of what you think you should be doing for yourself. Do the research, dig deeply to find the answers, because if you don't, you could be cutting your own throat, wrist, you know, you put it out there. Okay, you decide. But the point of it is, is that we sometimes are like lemmings, and we follow whatever's written. And we also know that, you know, we can talk about, you know, fake news, junk news, somebody's got an agenda. Find out what they have to gain, who wrote the check, and you'll find the answers much more clearly. We're going to have to break. Don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. Live. 
Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizzo here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizzo live in studio. Call 888-630-9625, 888 Let's talk about your problems from a point of view of, you know, hey, how about no drugs and avoiding surgery that probably is not necessary if you do the things that you need to get done. That's why we're here, kind of give you a different thought process. My job is to provoke you. Isn't that interesting? My job is to provoke your thought process, to make sure that you think things through completely and don't take somebody's word for it just because they have some sort of degree. And that means challenge me. That means challenge everybody because you're smart people. You get it. You understand how you can you know, synthesize through and make things happen for yourself in a very legitimate right way. Let's get into that a little bit. One other piece that I want to draw your attention to before we get into a couple other things is drinking sodas and sugars and consuming sugar vending. There was a very interesting article that was published a couple years ago, and I came across it was on my desk. I don't know why. But soda makes cells, sweeten sodas, make cells age faster. So if you're a soda drinker, and even if you're drinking it with diet elements in it. Guess what happens? It shrinks your telomere length, which is what keeps you alive on this planet. So we talk about the genome and the little genetic patterns. Well, those tails on them, they're called telomeres. And it's shown that sodas, sweetened sodas, make you die faster. So I'm going to let you think about that. And if you want to look it up, go to the American Journal of Public Health. And that was last October 2000, not last October, but October 2014. Check it out. I think you're going to find it extremely, extremely, extremely interesting. Let's talk about a little bit about that neurological tooth I told you about a little while ago. The mouth is one of those amazing things. When I lecture dentists, I try to draw their attention to the fact that they're going to see things in the mouth before anybody else does. They're going to see disease processes and fungus and bacteria. They're going, to, they're going to see what the intestinal system is doing. They're going to be able to evaluate better than anybody else. But what they also miss, even if they get that piece of it, what they miss is that all those teeth in your mouth, guess what happens? They have a link. They have an immediate link to other areas of the body, to the lungs, to the intestinal tract, to the heart, kidneys, muscle patterns, you name it where it is. If you have a tooth extracted and you don't do something to bridge that gap, you then alter that neurological signal, that energetic signal, and the associated area is going to be a problem. If you have an infection that's festering and continues to stay there, you're going to also expose yourself to chronic problems. If you don't take good care of your teeth, then you're going to be sicker as time goes on. And this has to do with implants and how they're done and root canals. There's a whole uh, back and forth in the dental community and in the natural community that says that you probably shouldn't have a dental or you shouldn't have a um, endodontic uh, filling in your tooth. You shouldn't have a root canal done because they can't get all the bacteria out. And what happens is that it festers. Now, there's an, there's another school that says that if you use uh, laser to clean out, and they're called little spicules or canals within the teeth, and then fill it, that maybe, you know, you're going to save it and you'll be okay. But a lot of evidence suggests is pull the tooth, save the space, put an implant, providing that you're not allergic and sensitive to the material. It's a whole area of biological dentistry that needs to be really respected. But when it comes to the mouth, when it comes to the tooth, there are direct relationships that when you don't have good alignment, when the vertical dimension is not normal, your whole body is going to weaken. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because I want you to get it, and I'm going to tell you where to go to find it. It's called neurological tooth. But meanwhile, Barbara, thank you for calling. How can I help you? Hi. Um, yeah, I am... Um 56, and about six months ago, I had my I had a colonoscopy, and they uncovered that I have um, ulcerative colitis, and they it, it's mild, but um, they tried to put me on medication, and, and I don't want to go on medication, and the symptoms aren't that bad, but it put, it appeared sort of out of nowhere in that I had. Um, All right, let me ask you let me ask let me ask you a couple quick questions, Barbara. Do, yeah, do, do you have uh, do you have multiple bowel movements a day? No. Okay. Do you have bleeding? 
Okay, so they said you have ulcerative colitis, but it has to be because there's an erosion within the intestinal tract. You may have perhaps been uh, misdiagnosed. It could have been uh, many other types of not good disease processes within the intestinal system. But let me say this to you. Uh, we've seen patients with ulcerative colitis that have 30 to 40 bloody bowel movements every day. And it begins to eat up and erode the gut. I'm sure they wanted to put you on a prednisone type of or a corticosteroid, you know, that is going to fight this with some type of antibiotic in the initial phases. That's generally the the treatment of choice. However, there's only, it was sort of like a like a, an aspirin sort of. They said it was as mild as an aspirin, but I didn't want to take it. No, it, it? there's nothing as mild as an aspirin. The 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 the, the things that they use for uh, for for ulcerative colitis are very severe, very significant, and can cause other problems. You know, we're coming up to the uh, the break. I want you to hold on because I do want to cover this with you because it's important. And there's things that you can do that you can make a huge difference in this. And, you know, to let it go only means to advance it. If you start using some of the medications that they use, it can be detrimental. So hang in there, Barbara. We're going to come back right after the break, and we're going to get a little bit further into the colitis situation. I think it's way too important to ignore and to cut you short. We're coming up to that midpoint. This is Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Stay tuned. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you on anything you have on your mind. We have Barbara still on the line. Barbara, you still there? Here. Okay, great. So listen, when it comes to ulcerative colitis, it can go from very, very mild, which obviously you're describing. It's an erosion of yeah. the erosion of the bowel. And again, I would question whether that's the really what's going on or if it's more of a Crohn's or something of that nature. It can be misdiagnosed. But it's uh, uh, in moderate cases and even in mild cases, I'll see them use Humira which, you know, uh, suppresses immunological function, and supposedly that's where all this stuff is coming from. Uh, very bad drug can cause all kinds of problems, um, you know, uh, over a period of time. The If they're giving you something that you said that uh, is no worse than aspirin, and if you listen to the program, aspirin can cause this kind of a problem. So if you've ever right. ta- taken aspirin on an ongoing basis, it can rip your, your gut up. What you're yeah. talking to is a, is a group of, of uh, medications called aminosalicylates, and they are used to control the inflammatory symptoms within the bowel. The uh, they'll give it to you in, you know in a liquid form sometimes because they want to coat it, if uh, particularly if they feel that you have any irritation in the upper digestive system. Um, problem is is that they can ultimately uh, cause what you're trying to get rid of, plus all kinds of other problems with joint space uh, irritation, muscle aches and pains, because it leaches coenzyme Q10 out of the body like any other salicylate does. Uh, so, you know, what can you do about it? Lots. Uh, the In our uh, practice, we're going to look at this as biochemical. We're going to look at emotional stress patterns. We're going to look at structural irritation. Now, remember, uh, just from a neurological point of view, that the... All the organ systems uh, run on something called a parasympathetic neurological uh, pattern, and that uh, that's from the spinal system. If the spine is irritated in any way, if there's a chronic pain pattern, the nerves that divide, they go to the organ systems and the muscles, they can be irritated. But also acupuncture energetics can be altered simply because of lifestyle exposures and so forth. But you also have to look at the things that you're sensitive to. If you're eating any kind of grains whatsoever, first thing you do is you've got to stop them. And uh-huh. give your your body an opportunity to begin the heal process. Your vegetables should be cooked, but you need vegetables. You need uh, or uh, cooked or or juiced. You have to make sure your proteins are easy and getting in the system. Nothing fried or irritating. Baked, broiled, boiled, um, and steamed are going to be your friends for a while. But to really turn it around, there are very specific nutraceuticals, nutritional bases, and treatment uh, with acupuncture, with laser, perhaps uh, some neurological uh, manual work. But uh, all of that can be uh, done, at, particularly at the state that you're at. You know, going back when I was in school, one of my first patients when I was uh, uh, an intern, and we'll talk about that, as my son would say, when the dinosaurs ruled the earth, uh, was a young guy who uh, was in his mid, uh, mid-30s at the time and had such severe, severe ulcerative colitis. And he had gone down. He was about five foot eleven, but he was about 135 pounds. 
and it was just eating him up. And those days, I didn't know a fraction of what I know today, but we treated him with uh, dietary fasting except for broths, tons and tons of vegetable broths, uh, alkalizing substances. We did old-fashioned naturopathic uh, remedies, uh, acupuncture, and we didn't have the availability of, of laser, things of that nature, and he fully turned around over a period of six months, and that was a very, very severe, significant case. In your situation, the whole idea is to find out what you're sensitive to, what uh, what the triggering patterns are, treat the body uh, cooperatively from a multidimensional point of view, and I'm very confident that you can get some help. Uh, Barbara, if we can help you, please give us a call. Um, this is not something that you need to live with. Appreciate your phone call. Thanks, you, Barbara. 888-630-9625, 888-630-9625. This is one of those conditions that you truly have to look at multidimensionally, and it could be started from a lot of different things. We talked about uh, neurological tooth patterns a minute ago, and you know, could something like that trigger the bowel? And the short answer is yes, it could. You know, when you're when you're dealing with any kind of irritation in the nervous system. Uh, you have many different connections. Uh, started out talking about the lack of, you know, paying attention to things. And we talked a little bit about the cerebellum. The cerebellum is a small brain that sits right at the base of where your skull ends. So if you put your fingers back on where your spine is, you kind of tilt your head back and forth a little bit, nod, and where that break is, just above that is the cerebellum. And then you have a little stem of that coming down. It's called the medulla. So now visualize this for a minute. You've got your brain and you've got this sack, if you will, that covers it. It protects it. It's attached to your skull, these bones that, you know, that protect everything that's, you know, that it surrounds. And it comes down and attaches to the vertebrae, the bones in your neck and your spine and so forth. And when the vertebral areas, the vertebrae, the bones of your spine, the skull bones shift, particularly in the upper portion of the neck, they can give you pain, they can give you headaches, they can give you numbness, they can give you dizziness and so forth. But they can give you chronic downstream problems. Remember I said early on in the program that a lot of our patients, Parkinson's, Parkinson's-like conditions, people with uh, upper nuclear problems where they can't maintain their balance, you're losing your balance, you're getting, a lot of this has to do with the upper portion of your neck and its misalignment causing problems reflexively, if you will, to this little part of the brain called the cerebellum. And so subsequently, when there is this misalignment, it, can, it also can lead into something called dural, uh, a dural pattern, a dural torque pattern. What does that mean? Well, we just talked about this covering that goes to the spinal cord and around the brain. That's called the dura, hard matter, dura, hard. And when it gets kind of, you know, tented up, when it gets twisted and turned a little bit, what happens is that it puts pressure or irritation reflexively or directly on the, uh, on the neurological system. And then subsequently, we got all these other types of symptoms that show up that we didn't know where they came from. Now, you take something like that, and let's say that you got your mouth all screwed up and your teeth aren't lining up the way they're supposed to. Do you think for one minute you're not going to have a problem, that you're not going to feel quite as good as you should? I mean, dentistry forever knows that if you have a tooth infection of some sort, that it may leach down and cause a heart problem. And they want you to get on these silly antibiotics. If you've ever had rheumatoid, well, that's you know crazy. I used to tell my patients there's different ways of handling those types of things. But you have to begin to look at the patterns that exist within the body. You have to look how they're all interconnected. That's what we do. I'm going to be doing this. Uh, I just committed... Uh, to doing some lectures around the metropolitan area over the next 12 months, probably every six to eight weeks. We'll let you know where they are, in addition to our in-house continuing education programs, because I want you to have the benefit of information on very specific subjects. We're going to talk about, we're going to do about an hour, you know, hour and 10 minutes. You can come over and, you know, I get to know you. I answer your questions and so forth. And we'll let you know when it happens and where they are. So, you know, just pay attention to that. 888 630 Donna, how can we help you? Hi there. I have a nodule in my thyroid, and I'm jumping the gun because I haven't seen a doctor yet. Um, I'm seeing him next week. Okay. So 
do you approve of these medicines that I might be having to take or whatever he would do with this, with this nodule? It depends on the medicines and it depends on what the problem is. You know, again, we don't know. So let me just kind of be broad based. Okay. All right. You can have in the thyroid, you know, the thyroid is this cute little bow tie thing down at the bottom of your throat, right up at the top of your chest. Mm -hmm. And it controls, it has an impact on every system in your body, every muscle in your body and so forth, at least very mildly or quite significantly. It puts out a hormone called thyroxine. Thyroxine is T4. How it does that, it's stimulated by pituitary to release its hormone by the action of something called TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. But that's just the beginning of the story. That T4 now has to be converted to T3. 80% of it is converted in the liver. Now, there's much more, but let's get to your question and let's talk about what takes place. The thyroid can be susceptible to many things. Radiation is one, toxic environment is another, uh, and it can form cysts. It can form uh, nodules. And the first thing that I want you to know is that the majority of these nodules that are there are benign, over 90% of them. So there's a 5% chance approximately that it's more than just a benign thing, okay? So you're going to go in. You don't know what it is yet. Have you had an ultrasound done? Uh, I had a CT scan. Okay. That's where they saw it. Okay. Ultrasound, no, I don't think so. Okay, and what did they tell you on the CT scan? I want to try to get more specific for you. Actually, I have nodules several places. Okay, that's not uncommon. I do too, by the way. And mine is from when I was a young kid that in those days they used to do radioisotope intake to see if the thyroid would work. And I've had three of them done when I was very young, meaning from about 17 to 19 to 20, before I knew anything about what I'm doing today. And so I've got these cysts all over my thyroid, and they're benign. And, you know, I do things that will maximize, you know, the capacity. Thyroid works in the presence of iodine, trace minerals, and an amino acid called tyrosine to produce T4, as long as there's not a veil, meaning inflammation across it. A lot of thyroid nodules can come as a result of inflammatory reactions due to other things. So uh, the cabbage family, you know, if you eat Brussels sprouts and cabbage and broccoli and so forth that are not cooked, they can affect your thyroid and make it sluggish and make it not work quite as good as it should. So there's ways of controlling that and making a difference, but you need somebody who really understands the pathway and not somebody that's going to say, well, we're going to throw all this medication at you and so forth. Now, if they decide to do, you know, they want to do a biopsy to find out what it's all about, there are some really good people around that do great work and you'll know immediately. Now, let's say, let's go to the worst case scenario, okay? Let's, let's talk about your fears. Let's say that this is a malignancy. Only about 5% of that 5% is a, a malignant piece that's really concerning that can cause you some problems, meaning it's not going to kill you 90% or plus of the time. So there's ways of handling that as well. Donna, what I would ask you to do is this. After you have your evaluation, send me a note. Go to rosellecare.com. Send me a note. Tell me what they said to you, and I will interpret it from a different perspective and tell you what I would tell you if you were my wife. Okay. And, and we would go that way, okay? Is now, that, if he wants to do a biopsy, that's okay if he puts that needle in there? If he wants to, do, you want to make sure that you have somebody that's going to do it that's done thousands of these things. Yeah, this this doctor is well-respected, I think. Okay. If he wants to do a biopsy, that's fine, but don't do anything else until you talk to me. And I may agree totally with what they're going to say. But I want to at least ha give you the opportunity to have a different perspective or at least, you know, say, hey, listen, if I was, you know, in this situation, I would be sending you here. Is that fair? Thank you. Yes. You're more than welcome. Donna, have a great day. Take care of yourself. Let me know what happens. Okay. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. You know, sometimes medical intervention invention is necessary, but sometimes there's other ways of handling it. Donna, how can I help you? Hi, um, my husband has uh, severe arthritis. He has it in his neck, and it's to the point where he actually turns his whole body. Um, he, he, in order to you know turn toward anyone, um, he's tried methotrexate. Uh, he has family history of cancer, so um, he has stopped using that. It also made him sick. He got pneumonia. How old, how old is your husband? He is sixty-five. Okay, so here's what I can tell you. All right. Mm -hmm. You don't ever want to see a set of x-rays on me. I've had multiple accidents, played uh, contact 
uh, sports in college. Um, you know, I've been crazy in all the things I'm doing from, you know, uh, skiing that nobody should do and things of that nature. And my spine has really gone through and been hammered uh, because of it. And, and I have degenerative uh, problems in my neck and low back. So what have I done about it? Well, my diet is the first thing that I take care of all the time. Mild exercise is second, but you've got a clean detox the system. You've got to clean it out. There are certain nutraceuticals that you can use, but I get treated with manual work, manipulative work, and acupuncture routinely, and it allows me to function at a very high level where I can do the things that I need to do. So unless your husband has explored those things, he hasn't explored everything that he could possibly do for himself. There's a lot that can be done. You've got to look at it multidimensionally. You've got to see what foods he may be putting in his body that are irritating to him and causing an inflammatory reaction that will make it worse. If he's taking any of the, the methotrexates and the NSAIDs and so forth, they will compound the injury because what they do is they block sulfate ion from getting in the joint. Sulfate, sulfa, is what allows the joint space to heal. And when you do these other things... It's not going to heal. It actually gets worse because there's a competitive uh, participation there. One wants to substitute for the other. The, the end result is things get much worse than they were before. So there's things that can be done, but your husband's going to have to want to change some things about himself. There's no reason to suffer when there may be other things that can be done. I'm not going to recommend medication to you, and I'm not going to tell you to take, take these herbs because those are great. They have to be very specific for your husband's condition. It has to be evaluated from structural injury patterns that are old and, and chronic. It has to be evaluated by uh, what he does with his diet, lifestyle, and so forth. And also, the, the end piece is the emotional piece, what he's willing to do to help himself. So, right. Don, I have him contact me. He can send me a note, or even better yet, have him come by the office, and you know, we'll, we'll take a good look. I really appreciate your phone call, Donna. Thank you so very, very much. Love to help him in any way that we can, because help can be had. You know, when you start seeing joint spaces that are not functional, you've got to look at it multidimensionally. But with 40 years of practice, I've seen so many of these things that everybody said can't be done. They can get done, and they can be done very, very well. Coming up to a break, we'll be back after a couple of very important messages. You know, people that bring you Dr. Thomas all live. Don't go away. 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live, as you do every Sunday, 12 noon on the Eastern Seaboard. You do the drill. You know where you're at. Do the math, and you know what time to listen, right? Tell your friends about it so we can educate and help as many people as we possibly can, which is the reason I do what I do, to serve, educate, and empower you on your path to extraordinary health. That's why we do this program. 888 That's how you get me when I'm here. And when I'm not here, go to rosellecare.com, rosellecare.com, and leave a message. Text me because and if you want one of our doctors to call you back, do that. Getting a hold of me by phone is virtually impossible, but I do return text messages, not text messages, email messages. I will get to them. I promise you that. But if you'd like to talk to one of the doctors at the Rosal Center for Healing, Call the office at 703-698-7117, and one of these very great doctors will do everything they can to get back to you and answer your questions. I'm going to take a question, one more here, because it's important, I think. Carolyn, are you there? Yes, hi. Okay, listen, we only have a couple minutes, so I want to answer and at least put you in the right direction. You, you have a question about lupus. Well, yeah, that's kind of the broad story, um, which it's kind of complicated, and I don't know if there's anything we can talk about. Well, give me a, a, give me a question, and then I'll take you through it. I mean, we're talking about a very chronic autoimmune type mm-hmm. of condition that's mostly female. Right. And right. so let's go from there. Okay. Well, at this point, I'm trying to determine. I am looking at my own test results and trying to determine what's going on because I just I feel like I'm not getting sort of straight answers um, because I may or may not have lupus. I may or may not have Sjogren's. I may have both of them. Okay. So I'm just looking up everything I can and, and trying to determine, you know, sort of what's going on. All right. So let me give you some real quick bullet points. Obviously, I wish you would have called early on. We could have talked about it at length. But, you know, in either whether it's Sjogren's and so forth, I've treated both of them over the years, and they have multiple pieces to them. Uh, 
uh, autoimmune patterns, neurological factors. Uh, sometimes huge stress patterns are involved with it as well. And in the greatest majority of cases, we've been very, very supportive and helpful in turning these conditions around to a place where, and we're going to use the, the terminology, uh, not cure, we're going to use the terminology remission that doesn't come back, okay? We'll just, okay. we'll leave it at that. Now, you know, with a lupus problem, you have all kinds of things that you look at from viral patterns. And same thing with Sjogren's, by the way. This is going to be encompassing in both of them. There's allergic patterns. There's an irritable gut problem where, I mean, the gut is permeable. You're absorbing things before they're fully digested, so they become a culprit. They become an irritation to the body. Uh, you, your heavy metal toxicity uh, of all sorts uh, get into the system and so forth, particularly if anybody's had a uh, Tons of vaccines and so forth. All this stuff gets into the body. You know, we uh, that permeable gut is also called leaky gut syndrome. Uh, toxins from other areas as well. Uh, the the pattern that you look for is a combination of things. And then you look at obviously the blood supply. You're gonna you're gonna be looking at the different markers for Sjogren's. You're gonna do the markers that are crossovers for lupus. And there's some specificity about them, but they're really broad and generalized. When we look at a condition, we look at the why behind that. What's a triggering pattern? The symptoms are, as you know, can be huge from fatigue to, you know, to joint pain and I don't feel good and headaches and even anemic processes that are awful. Blood pressure can go crazy. You can end up with damage to the different organ systems. So, what I can leave you with is that a lot of this can be changed. Do this, Carolyn. I can go back and forth with you. Go to uh, rosellecare.com and send me a note. You can get to any one of our doctors, but send it to me, and I will give you my thoughts, my direction, but all is not lost, and so much can be turned around. I really appreciate your phone call. We're coming up to a break. Wish I had another two to three hours to talk to you. It would be great. You know, we're here every Sunday giving you the best we possibly can to make you think. That's why we do the program. I love you all. I'll see you next week. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Roselle Center for Healing reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams and consider a thermography scan from the thermography centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Thermographic imaging can detect abnormalities years before a mammogram, and it's safe and non-invasive. For more information, visit thermographycenters.com. This is Dr. Tom Roselle, author of Ageless Health, Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com.